everybody, and welcome to the Koi Bookworm Plays with Yarn podcast. I'm Hannah, a Jersey girl who studies at the University of Liverpool. It's been a while, guys. Sorry for the no-show last week. Um, it's the second week of the new semester, and I am trying to get everything sorted, and I just kind of lost it last week with the first week of school and having everything figuring out the new schedule, so um, I did film last week, but I only did about five minutes, and I hated it, so I was like, I'm just not going to do one, um, but I have a bit more uh, content this week, and uh, I think it'll be a bit better, so I think we're going to have a bit of funny lighting today because it was bright and sunny about uh, 20, 30 minutes ago when I was getting set up, but a whole bunch of clouds have just rolled in and they are, looks like they are rolling out. So we might get some sun, we might get some no sun, we'll see. Um, I do have a couple of finished objects to show you. They're small, but they're finished objects. The first one is this one, and, and I've totally blinked on who did the pattern, but I will put it in the um, description box. So this is the a leaf coaster. Um, it's a little bit too small to be a coaster. I made the mistake of going to the store and just being like, I'm going to get some thread. See, there's sun over here. Hello. <laughs> I don't understand what's going on with the lighting. Ah! But um, I went to the store and knew I wanted to make coasters and thought, well, I'll just get crochet thread. That's what I've made coasters out of in the past, and I'll find a pattern for it. So I got some cr crochet thread. This is the Rico Design Essentials Crochet. It doesn't say what size it is, but it's the itty bitty teeny tiny one. And um, so I was browsing Ravelry for some free um, coaster patterns, and I found this leaf one, but it was not designed for crochet thread, it was designed for the next one up. Uh, I think like four plier DK weight. And I was a little bit stubborn because I didn't, I also did not have the right size needle for this thread. And I was like, well, it'll come out a bit bigger anyways, so let's just try it. So I did it. And it's actually not that bad of a size. It would, it's about my palm. It would be great for like bunting maybe, or if you have really, really small glasses, it would work. But um, my I like to drink very large mugs of coffee and tea, and my mugs just dwarf it. They go off the edge, and it wouldn't really work as well. So I was planning on going back to the store and getting different yarn. Ended up going to a completely different store and end up with some different yarn and have created this one and this one. And these are much better sizes. This is actually the size of my hand. If I can load it, there we go. Size of my hand and my mugs fit on top of it. Um, they work up really, really easy. I've already I pretty much have the pattern memorized except for um, two rounds where it's like confusing with the whole like it, it's the shaping rounds um, but for the most part I can whip them up in an hour and so I have two and I'm aiming to make eight because I have four different colors and I want two of each color and the yarn that I used 
is a hundred percent cotton. It's organically produced, which I thought was a plus and was really cheap. So, um, I'm going to do a little bit of additions to the hoard right now, just because I'm going to talk about this, um, the yarn that I bought. So I might as well just talk about it all in one go. Um, it's from this store in Chester called, um, Sostrengrene? I'm not really sure. I know it's supposed to mean two sisters, I think, in Danish. Um, and it's a really interesting store. It's not, um, it's not a craft store, and it's not a yarn store, but it does have some crafting stuff in it. It has a bunch of, like, little home goods, like, you can buy chairs, you can buy plates and cups and candles and wrapping and yarn and all sorts of random things but you can and it's all like random prices like it's not 2.99 or one pound it's like 96 pence and two pounds 32 or something like that so it's a really interesting weird store and I went in and found all of these yarns and they had they had wool blends they had cotton they had um and they had tons of colors there was a whole wall that was of this cotton um one and they had a couple of different blends of cotton like they had a hundred percent cotton eight slash four and eight slash eight and then this one which is just a hundred percent cotton i'm not really sure what there's not a whole lot of explanation on the bands of what it is exactly, but I'll read it to you. So it's organically produced. Um, it's Anna and Clara 100% cotton and with two and a half to three millimeters, you should get 38 by 28 stitches in 10 by 10 centimeter square. Will you focus? Are you just gonna focus on me? Come on. Yeah. So that's what it is. Um, it's, I liked it, it worked. Yeah, sorry. Um, it knits really smoothly. Uh, I, or crocheted, sorry. I, I've crocheted with cotton before and I felt like it was really sticky, but this is really smooth. It, I had a couple of um, splitting issues, but nothing that was not major. It wasn't major, it was easy to resolve. And I got in these four colors and they're beautiful. They're definitely my colors. Um, and I'm excited to get more of the coasters done. So now on to whips. Um, the only whip that I have for this episode, I think, I don't think I worked on my socks. Yeah, I didn't work on my socks. Um is my cardigan and I am much further than I was before so last time I showed this I was only here on the back I have since then added the fronts and connected the fronts and done about three or four inches down, I'm maybe an inch and a half to two inches away from doing some of the hip shaping. This is the I Am Groot uh, cardigan by Mary Anarella. And it works up so nicely. I, I was a little bit nervous about doing the cables because I know that cabling can take a while and 
when I was using the cable needle because I had taught myself how to ca uh, cable without a needle for only one direction and I could not think of how to do it going in the opposite direction and so I was being kind of lazy and not teaching myself that and just using the cable needle but then I decided because they're it's only one by one cables it's not really massive um, three or four by cables that it would just be faster if I did cabling without a cable needle and so I just taught myself retaught myself that and um, it's been going it flies really really fast um, and it fits. I'm excited about that. I was a little bit nervous because when I did my gauge swatch, um, I didn't wash it. I didn't do a proper gauge swatch. I just kind of did a couple of rows and got a swatch about that big and then measured and realized that I was off by a stitch or two. So I went up a needle size and didn't bother swatching with that, but knew it would give me the right one and so um, I was a little nervous about that but it's fine I've tried it on a couple of times because it is top down and it seems to be fitting I still have to do the band and give it a blocking and everything but just as it is it fits pretty well and it's supposed to have a lot of negative ease kind of like this sweater I'm wearing so it's okay if it's a little bit big the yarn that I'm using is Blue Sky Fibers in the October Sky colorway. It's a 100% Highland wool. Um, I do think it's a Peruvian Highland wool, not Scottish Highland wool. Um, and it has gorgeous stitch definition. So it, I love how this, this sign, I'm sorry. Um, I love how the cables show up. Um, and yes, my stitch marker is a Gentleman Pikachu. It was not originally a stitch marker. It was originally a phone charm. But I don't use phone charms anymore. Because I'm not in high school anymore. <laughs> um, but yeah. So switched it to a stitch marker. And I love it. I don't know... I, it's so soft it's so soft but I can spit splice it so I don't have any um, weird connections I don't have to weave in too many ends um, what else to say oh I am um, for all the edges that I can um, I have been slipping the first stitch because I know that I have to pick up the button band and along the arms. So to save me some hassle, I've been, um, and to make it a little bit neater, I've been slipping that first stitch so that it's easier to pick up. Um, I think that's all. Uh, I will be going to Edinburgh. I don't know if I mentioned that in, I think I did. But um, I changed I changed my class schedule because there was going to be too high of a learning curve for the class that had a field trip that weekend. So um, I will be going to Edinburgh. I have my train ticket and I have my hotel. And I tried to get the Keeley tickets. I was all ready. I was set up. I had my card out. I had a timer set, the web page up. And my internet is just way too slow uh, so I totally missed out on the Kaylee tickets unfortunately but that's okay I know that there's going to be a lot of other events going on um, and so I will just go to that uh, to something else um, the knit night tickets last time I haven't tried to buy them mostly because um, I didn't plan my money out properly. So if I bought the ticket for that, uh, I wouldn't be able to eat this month. Um, <laughs> so I just decided that I won't 
um, bother with trying to get that ticket, um, and I'll just find something else to do. It will also be my first night in the city, and um, I want to be able to have a little bit of a chill, like, get ready, like, not get ready, but, um, con like, chill out after a four-hour train ride and be ready for the next day. Um, if anybody's going to be there and wants to say hi, please say hi. I want to talk to more people. I want to meet more podcasters, more people who actually watch my videos. Um, yeah. That's pretty much it. Edinburgh, I am so excited for it. I really can't wait. I've never been to Edinburgh. I've been to Glasgow, um, but I've not been to Edinburgh, and I am super excited for that. So, on that note, happy knitting, and goodbye!